Um, uh, today is the second lecture uh, dedicated to the memory of Igor Stislavich Shafarevich. And uh, Professor Zhang, uh, the title of the lecture of Professor Zhang is Neuron Tate Heights and Rosa Gear Formula. Okay. Thank you. So, last time, when I talk about arithmetic of curves, um, I list there, I just I divided the question into three parts, genus zero, genus one, and genus two. And genus good, I mean, last time we focused on uh, this hyperbolic case that doesn't mean the model, the conjecture proved by Fartins. And uh, more or less focus on two approaches. The only one project, which is proposed by Parshen in 1968, and uh, finally be realized by Fartens in 1983. Today, um, I will talk about more about um, the the case, uh, the genus genus um, one case. So. So if we see, so let's see, be a curve of genus one of a number field. The main question we want to do is start at the C of K. So the set. rational points in K. And uh, the question would be a study, um, what can we say about C of K? And uh, they, so for example, the typical case is uh, that's restarted by our CZQ, for example, this is a case really intensively studied by Samer And Sylvester. Right. So this is a probably the simplest equation you want to study. Uh, when A, B, C, uh, all of them are one, that is a part special case of the Fermat last equation. But for general A, B, C, believe it or not, even today we have no idea how to solve the problem. So this is a question about, it's studied by, by Samer and uh, Sylvester. Uh, this kind of question. So uh, very fast, what's going on is that you know you have a local global principle, is if your C of K is not empty, then this implies have two conclusions, C of KV is not empty for all V. And, uh, but the converse is not necessarily true, right? It's actually, it's not true. So for example, 3AQ plus 4YQ equals 5ZQ has no, it has solution in this side, but it does not have solution in this side. So this is a, that's the first question you're doing. But it's not a, what I'm gonna do is uh, so if you assume this kind of a thing, then you you study this E with the Jacobian of C. So this is a, uh, usually called an elliptic curve. M C equals E if and only if C of K is not empty. Right. So anyway. And this C, this, this C uh, define a group in H1 of K of E. So this is a, is a simple way to write a Galois group of K of K of E. So that's the way of doing. If you assume this condition precisely, then you will get uh, something called a Shavaruch group of E is equal to the kernel of H1 of K E to the product of V H1 
E over V. So then, the question, the first question about these sides is essentially become study of the shower tube. So this is one question. The second question is about E of K itself, right? Because if it is not, it's not empty, then it becomes study this group, right? So these are two questions. And uh, the general conjecture is a folklore conjecture is that both of them should be effectively computed. So the conjecture will be a uh, rather than conjecture, the following. I'm not sure how precise the conjecture is. The first one probably uh, is due to uh, Goldfield and the Spiro. In fact, they show the first conjecture is equivalent to the ABC conjecture. The cardinality of Sha of E, first of all, is finite. It's not only finite, it less equal than uh, their, uh, if I fix K, that's a fixed K, I don't want to make the really of the conductor norm of K of Q, the conductor of E to the uh, half plus epsilon. Okay? So it'd be interesting. So this side is not logarithm, just this in. The second part, oh, this is a conductor. So maybe write the conductor there. The second part by LAN, it took the exactly the same process that there exists a generate P1, PR, maybe the P, I don't write R, my PT here, of E of K, such that there's a height of this PI is less equal than uh, almost the same band. So there's a second part. Anyway, the boss conjecture says that you presumably have some way to do that. Of course, the current status of knowledge is really, really far away to understand the needs of them. As I said, this guy itself is stronger than it's a modular the BSD conjecture I'm going to explain to the ABC conjecture. Right? So, so it's, a, it's really. Uh, for any epsilon bigger than zero. Yeah. But this thing depends on epsilon. Yeah. For any epsilon bigger than zero, we have the, this question. So this is, a, it's, it's all about the diophantum problems in genus one. And there are, there are many questions. As I say, the, the equation, the question I just listed it's already uh, quite difficult. So it's just to think about the question uh, of, so I mean, two distinguished, distinguished equation is, so there's a, the question we really, I mean, for this thing, really have two problems, we have no idea. What, yes? Unknown for function theory case. Not known. But if you assume a BSD, I don't know, it probably have some hope. Right? But I didn't really do that. I mean, for example, the, the examples as I said, it's uh, xq plus yq equals n. So this is the same as yq y squared equals xq 
maybe plus some n. I mean, this n may be different kind of n here, right? So this is the question is about which integer can be write down as a sum of two, uh, the sum of q, uh, two Russian numbers. This is already uh, far hard to understand. So this is the j variance equals zero. So even for this elliptic curve, we have no idea. Then second guy, so this is a Sylvester problem. And recently there's some progress, but in general we don't know. Second thing, second problem is really uh, is y square equals sq minus nx. So this is uh, the congruent number problem. So this is j equals 1728. So this elliptic curve has a modification cm by a z by q z3. This is the cm by q of i. So it's the two most simplest elliptic curve you can imagine. Even for these two elliptic curves, we don't really know how much idea how to do it. So it's pretty striking that you know, in diaphragm geometry, we don't really know that much of a thing. Anyway, so that's the thing. So now I talk about narrow tether height. Um, so narrow tether height um, was used to prove uh, the Modevay theorem. So it is a it's a very simple construction. So you have elliptic of E there uh, is a y square. You map to P1. Inside of P1, you have uh, any multiplication, say, uh, by M there. So this is just by um, quarter there plus or minus one. And uh, so this, of course, commutes. You get P1 there. So in this hand, you get a phi M. Okay, it's just a morphism, rational morphism by p1 to p1. So, so what we know is that you can define if you have a p here, here. So this morphism defined by x coordinate. If you have a y square, you got x q plus x plus b. So this is a x and a y goes to x coordinate. So then, uh, what's going on if there's a peak here? Um, then, what I'm trying to say is uh, this morphism from simply says x of m of p equals phi m of x of p. So phi m is a, is a, is a polynomial, is a rational morphism, degree phi m equals m squared. So, so there, so you have a, a usual, um, so you have e of k goes to p1 of k. Here you have a usual height, it's a, as, a, as a very height. So very height is the height I described last time. It's the most naive way to do it. You just consider the valuations using the error infinity norm. So you can put this in this x coordinates, but if we integrate it a lot, you will find that h uh, combine this thing together called h. Then what do you what you can see is h m p will be m square h p plus a bounded function. Okay, this is not a, a shift or one, just a bounded function, right? So this is a bounded function. So if you think about it, so this means that if we divide both sides by m square equals h of p plus you know o of, I mean, 
So this sim plus OM, OM but divided by M. So of course, this means that um, if you if, if you rest the powers M very a lot of them, this thing could be convergent. So so you define the canonical height to be limit of say uh, k equals infinity h m k of p divided by m two k. So this will be convergent. This is convergent and independent of of m. So of course this m is bigger than one. So this is called a narrow at the height. Of course, when I write this thing, it's a, it's a little misleading because this height is just defined by simple way. Why I need two people's name attached to your simple stuff? So the way I define it here is due to Tate. So narrow is the way which actually are, is so important related to the work of uh, R. Kellogg is that these heights uh, can be so the big remark is that there so this is a really the you can say the tetra height the neuron narrow is so to express so this as head of p as um, as a kind of local intersection as a sum intersection numbers um, between um, P bar and O bar. So what I really mean that if you have e, elliptic curve E defined over K then you get an elliptic surface of a spec of OK. So if you have a point P here, you also have a zero section there, right? So then uh, you get an, uh, a P bar here and an O there. And, uh, and uh, somehow, it's, uh, it's, uh, this H of a P is uh, more or less is a negative O bar of P bar. So intersection is the neck of this thing. So more or less this stuff. Right? With certain normalization. Of course, I didn't define this thing at all. Certain normalization. Okay, it is this part that our Kellogg theory exactly generate this idea. Yes, but I never already know. Uh, before Arakel's intersection, he already write down explicit formula for uh, this. But it, in, in Nero's formula, you distinguish these uh, elliptic surface in two parts. One is, uh, has a good reduction, has a bad reduction. The good reduction is exactly intersection. In bad reduction, you need to modify a little bit because uh, yeah, once you have a bad reduction, your P and O may leave the different component or same component. If in the same component you have no problem, just compute intersection. If a different component, then you have to modify some numbers. So I'm not going to explain. So this is the place that uh, Arakel theory is a direct generalization. So Arakel theory. The director generalization of Neron's Neron's uh, local height theory. And uh, the tenor theory, of course, is just uh, just an algorithm, doesn't tell you anything. But our Kelly theory just just doing like that.
Okay, so this is uh, um, it's just a rough idea. So if you so there so the boss, I mean, we didn't really say that much. So there's a concept of Shavarich group and a narrow table highs are uh, uh, the key important. So let's just, I try to write down, if you never heard this thing, say this theorem, which, I mean, there, we know a lot is called kind of model A. I should explain in the beginning is that, so let E of K be a, uh, elliptic curve of a number field, then E of K finitely generated. So the proof itself, really the combination of uh, a cohomology argument plus heights. So this is a probably the every important theorem proved in number theory. You, you, you need some geometry plus some cohomology, right? So I just sketched the proof. Of two parts, the first part is say, E of K of M of E of K is a finite. So somehow this this step is allow you to do to infinitely d divide your group, right? Because the finite, you always can divide. The second part is important. E of k is a discrete. So what I really mean that for any h inside r, the set x inside e of k. H hat of x less than h is finite. So, 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 I mean, the, you find the funny thing. The second guy just say, for any bigger ball, there's finite elements inside. The first thing says that you know, you can have a finite generator. You, you can make every element smaller and smaller. The two combined together, you use the infinite descent to prove that. So that's a, the idea, the proof, the motivated theorem is basically descent. Since you use a descent, your proof will never be effective. Right? So you, because you, you essentially say, I give a bigger solution, I'll find a smaller solution. Right? But you have starts with a bigger solution. Right? So you have no idea when to, when to go. So the first part usually we call um, so called weak model of a theorem, and uh, it's the follow from it, the following is that sequence. E of k, u, e of k, uh, the q of m. So this is m torsion. E of k bar. So this is isomorphic to z of mz square goes to e of k bar goes to e of k bar. This is multiplied by m. So you apply uh, the apply cohomology. Uh, the cohomology of g g k module. So you will you will get e of k. You take a variance of this thing to h one k of e of m. And good h one k e of m equal to zero, okay? 
But if we just do this part, you will get, uh, you will not going to prove too much because this is, you want to prove this is finite. But this still could be very, very big. So, but I already gave you a hint. You don't need to do whole thing. You should replace this thing by, you see, there's a, there's a subgroup here. You give it by Shavaruch group, the Sha K E here. Is a subgroup inside of here. Then you pull back the Shavaruch group, you get the same group. Now this is equal to E of K of K here. The very interesting part, this is always a happy number theory. We have no idea about this guy. We have no idea about this guy. Right? Because this is something you want to study. The most interesting thing in, the, in arithmetic in the very beginning is that I want to study. This is a big group I study. This is a big group I study. But I have no idea. But somehow, we know this group very well. So this group is more, is more, pro, more uh, concrete group to, to study. Right? So, so there, so the the bottom line is that so this exact sequence just combine two problems in the beginning to the one single thing that the theorem is the same M E of K is finite. So this guy, this is not a, a humongous, this is something you can prove without a knowledge in the first part and the last part, right? So this is a very interesting thing. But this is a, not a bit surprising. For example, when you study a uh, number field in a, uh, in a class number formula, you have a regulator and a class group, right? And we don't know, we, we know we combine both together, you get a, a, a class number formula. But really, we, know how, we don't know how to separate them. Even in the real quadratic, we don't know how to separate them. Right? Imaginary quadratic, that's why. The reason is the imaginary quadratic field is so nice because the regular is trivial. So all contribution come from class group. In the real quadratic, you already have a problem. You have a, a unit, logarithm of units plus times the class group. The class group and log units, there's no way to separate them. In general, it's difficult. So have a similar question here. Okay, so so this is uh, the same. So that's why, and uh, when you listen to many lectures in number theory, and uh, after a few steps, they just work on this part, skip everything else, right? Like Yawasawa theory is mainly is about this group, right? So the really we have a theory about the first part or second part. So this is why that the Kurosaki formula is just so. So striking, so we'll tell you, uh, study two groups, you get a, the thing there. Okay, so there's the first thing. Um, now I want to talk about error functions. As I said that, you know, I mean, the, the complete coincidence, when we started is um, the second proof, I mean, the proof of Fortin's the first proof of and the model conjecture following Parsons' approach is reduced to the arithmetic curve, to the arithmetic modular variety. That's really a really big idea. The reason is I mean, modular space variety is such a concrete variety. In this case, not only concrete, it's actually Shumra variety. I always say that, I mean, like 20 years ago, when I was young, I say, maybe we can use some other method to construct another variety from mirror symmetry, from modular space curves, from whatever, but nobody succeed. So it looks like only the Schumpra variety right, right now we can use. Even we have algebra geometry so much advanced, but we don't really know how to use other variety to do any computation. So, the, so for, girls that, for this kind of variety, I believe, it, I mean, these days, at the end of lecture, you see that we only have one dimensional Schumpra variety can be used. Right, so we don't know how to use something else. On Friday lecture, I will talk about something 
other Shemura variety. But today I will talk about this thing. But the, but the connection between elliptic curves and the modular curve, uh, unlike the very elementary construction given by Parshen, all the modular problem, this construction actually is much uh, indirect through the, the Langland program error function. So we have the E here, y squared x cubed plus x plus b. Then, um, so let, let data be a discriminant. And uh, I, I, we're not going to define this properly. To define discriminant, you need to really, you really need to uh, think about all elliptic surface. You take a minimal model. Then probably it's, good. it's okay. I mean, if we don't, if we don't use algebra geometry, then you have to define discriminant locally, because this is not a, a PID, so you have to define locally. If we use algebra geometry, okay, it's very easy, since it's a it's a two-dimensional scheme. You have a minimal model, then you define discriminant as uh, the zero devices, the zero, zero cycles of singularity, right? The singularity is focused on the co-dimension with two things. You get a zero cycles, right? And the, so that's it. You push, you push forward to the zero cycle, the spec OK. You get a divisor here. So that's called discriminant. The conductor is that you more or less forget the multiplicity, right? But be careful. They also have the precise definition of the conductor. You know, for semi-stable case, it's just forget about just multiplicity. In general, it's not. So if for each v, um, a place v um, inside a prime spec, okay, find a place. Then we define a v to be uh, the the Q, um, okay, so QV equals the residue field, uh, the cardinality of O of K of P of V. Okay, so this is the uh, P of V, is this in? So V is the final place. So this is equal to QV plus one minus uh, this E, OK. Or PV, cardinality the same. So you just count how many points there. And then you formulate uh, an infinite product. So you formulate that um, all the, the product RV in S is a two parts, is a V divide discriminant that is one minus AV QV negative S. V not divided discriminant that, that is one minus AV QV negative S plus QV 1 minus 2S negative 1. So they get this product. That once you write this thing, of course, this is a, it's, it's formally is a, a n and to the S is the power, a n integer. But in fact, um, we have this uh, the beautiful estimated by Hasse that AV is less than twice square root of QV. So this way imply that L, E, and S is absolutely convergent for a real part of S bigger than three and a half.
And um, so then you, you can uh, I put a little bit of Archimedean place there. So if you put there, you have lambda e s defined by 2 pi negative s gamma s of degree of k, e defined over k, uh, then uh, L e of s. So this is a complete error function there. So the big conjecture will be called the Hasselbeck conjecture. Lambda e of s has a has a um, holomorphic continuation to whole complex plane and satisfy a functional equation. And this equation can be written down precisely like this stuff. The lambda e of s equals to, um, let me see, what's the function equation? Epsilon of e, norm of e, 1 minus s, lambda e, 1 minus s. So this is the conductor. This is equal to plus minus 1. That's already pretty striking that for each elliptic curve, you assign a parity. Right? I mean, the, you write the equation at the beginning, how do you know? This tells you there's a parity there, either plus or minus. There's nothing zero in the middle. That's already pretty strange. Thing. From algebra geometry point of view, that's, I mean, it's harder if I write an elliptic surface. How do I know the elliptic surface is called an even or odd? But if your elliptic surface is defined in a number field, you automatically have a sign associated with it. Yeah. So you see, you know, that's already tell you something like that. So then we have this so-called conjecture. And a BSD. So the BSD, uh, the first part, you say that the of E is finite. The second part is that the rank E of K equals order of vanishing of S. The third part is that the leading coefficient is L e of s. The leading coefficient is equal to, um, as I mean, uh, is uh, some constant c times r of e. I will explain the cardinality of e here divided by uh, e of the tall. This is uh, S minus 1. Uh, let's give a name called this R. R plus O S minus 1, R plus 1. So the leading term we give by this way. This R of E is, is basically the volume E of K, right? Maybe. So it's a determinant, maybe square determinant of the Husser for this uh, for, for generator. So if E of K modular E of K torsion summation Z of Pi, then you get this formula. So so this is pretty much uh, this is the last one is pretty is, is pretty striking. The put the the volume of this uh, disk and uh, the Shavarovich group packed the one thing, put in this the leading coefficient here. If 
function equation. Oh, two minus s, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I want to make sure the one, okay. Yes. Yeah, if you, you suppose to apply the equation twice, one more time, you get it back. Right? It's just the one symmetry. And uh, I, I believe if you assume this conjecture for every elliptic curve, you can get a certain uh, effectivity of the, uh, I mean, at least give you some kind of algorithm for computing Shavaruchi uh, group and the um, and uh, um, the rank. The reason is that I mean, you see, this num this thing is completely computable, and this is computable, right? And uh, um, then um, somehow the conjecture tell you that you can uh, program if you compute the values. Say, for example, if we give you error function. If you numerically calculate this number, if a number is too small, for example, if rank is zero, for example, if rank is zero, then everything is zero, this will be integer. Right? You don't have this part. Right? So after a while, um, this R of E has a bounded by C, some some R there. So 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 the the conjecture tells you that this number has a has a gap to zero. If it's not zero, we have a gap. So if you assume BSC conjecture, then, uh, in fact, by computing the error function, theoretically, you will uh, compute the rank of the elliptic curve. Because it's, uh, you know, of course, computer, one computer compared this value can never tell you zero, just can tell you very small. But you know, if it's too small, then it should be zero. Then compute the derivative. If it's too small, you also know zero, right? So after a while, theoretically, you can get the rank, but not as strong as the conjecture I listed in the beginning. The conjecture list at the beginning is really strong, but this conjecture itself will tell you there's could be algorithm there. Okay, so this is the uh, the, the the I mean the uh, three maybe. Two sets of conjecture I know. One set of conjecture is about what the SHA, what the generates. This is one is more precise. So what can we prove? Well, we can prove almost nothing. So the thing we're going to do, you could call Zagi formula, which, which is discovered by uh, a bunch of people. So the Higginson points of construction. So I'll talk about gross Zagier formula. Yeah, when R equals zero. Yeah, I'm going to explain. Yeah, R equals zero and one and find a number field of a Q. Uh, of a total real field is approved. The Q is approved in 90. The, the total real is approved in my work. Your function field is just approved recently by my students. So I put the paper in the archive, the function field analog. So I, put, I wanted to make a formula. So the first thing I want to talk about so let the e is over q, the k is over q, the elliptic curve. So then, in this case, it's really nice saying that then by a while, then Le is, is really modular. So this is equal to Rf s, f the module form for gamma not n, 
So this N is a conductor of E. So this is a group A, B, C, D that this is integer. And A, D minus B, C equals 1, the C divided N. Then um, by four tens, and the Shimura, um, I mean the pre previous work of Shimura, that this remains that there is a parameterization. There's a suggested morphism. From x naught of n to e. Okay, so which take infinity to zero. Okay, so this is such an important thing that transfer uh, the arithmetic elliptic curve to the, trans the arithmetic of uh, the modular curves, x naught of n is upper plane joined with p1 of q, take the gamma naught of n. So it's a, it's a Riemann surface, you know. And uh, it itself is a moduli of the parameterization of pairs. The isogeny, the alpha, the kernel of alpha is cyclic of n. Right? So it's very concrete. By modular interpretation, at least, I mean, here is just a Riemann surface. By modular interpretation, it thinks the modular space, each point and a curve is another elliptic curve. So this makes the, the space much more interesting than just the uh, Riemann surface here, right? So it's, uh, it's really, so this guy is not really a one-dimensional object. It carry another dimension. Okay, so, so what's the striking which is going back to, uh, so you see, so what, <laughs> the parameterization, if you think about parameterization, you know, x naught of n also is defined by, uh, x naught of n is really defined by uh, the q, I mean, the, the q is, is basically the q joined with two coordinates, j line and the j n. So one, so it's, it's, it's a, because of j is, is joined by two, j1, j2 is, is given by the two elliptic curves. So, so roughly speaking, this is a curve of modular uh, uh, equation. So if you think about it, um, this, this curve it has a two explicit modular functions. So, so you can think about the Fortin theorem after while, so it's basically say I can solve elliptic equation by a modular functions. If you think about it this way, if you think it, I don't want a geometry. But why this is good? The reason this is good is the, the, the humongous observation by Hingner in 1952 that's a funny thing. Well, Hengen just covered this thing when he was 59 years old. He's, this is probably one of his first paper about this thing. He found out that for, for, I mean, this, this Ji, J1, J2, um, the, the values of J1, J2 are the same points gives Solution T 
to a certain elliptic curve. Actually, in his case, it's just y squared x q minus n x. And the solution is a non-trivial solution. And uh, this is uh, it's, uh, in the same paper of Hengen. Uh, and, uh, and this gives you the solution to some congruent number problem. For example, he showed that every prime p modular 8 with the residue 5 is a congruent number. So he, he just constructs infinitely many congruent numbers by this method. He's the first person ever proved such a statement. And if you read his paper, his paper is very interesting. It's a very beginning. He talked about congruent number. He figured out a method to do that. And the paper is about 20 pages. A very last, center, last page, he said, OK, my method also solve the Gauss class number one problem. So the Gauss conjecture, there's a Gauss list nine imaginary quadratic field with class number one. But he proved at most 10 of them. He could not rule out <laughs> what is the number 10. And then the Hengen used the same paper, solved that problem. But his paper somehow has some gaps, you know, mathematically. So he was not accepted by general community uh, after maybe many years later. I think, uh, I mean, he died uh, maybe seven years later after he died. His paper was checked by other people. It's essentially correct. It's an amazing thing. Anyway, the, the work of Hengen, Hengen was picked up again by Birch and trying to uh, understand their applying to the Birch and Sun Dying conjecture. So, there, so now we give a general construction that which was discovered by Birch. Birch called the point the Hengener points. The interesting part is that the point discovered by Hengener is not a, is not a satisfied the definition by Birch. <laughs> okay, so I described what, the Hengen, what is the Birch of the Hengener points? What is the Hengener of the Hengener points? Are different. Okay, so okay, now let K of a Q is imaginary. Quadratic. So we, 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 we let the D be the discriminant of K. So K is equal to Q of D there. It may be negative discriminant. So then, this is called a Hingen condition. This Hingen condition, as I say, is not given by Hingen, it's by Birch. Is that, okay, so if a P divided N implies that P is split in K, the second thing is, is uh, the, 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 the D is odd. But this condition is very important. So P will be a two prime a bar here, right? Okay. So then, um, if the n, for example, is a P i e i, then you can make up idea to be P i e i. So this will be idea. This idea will have a, a, a property that okay. This idea is that sum of z mod n z. Okay, so this this condition basically allow you to construct one idea inside whose residue ring is a cyclic. Because the residue ring is cyclic, somehow you can do something here. So this allow you to construct a, a point O k of n to I'm sorry. Construct a two elliptic curve. Two 
to same elliptic curve there. So you get a, a C mod N, then you have C mod O of K, you get a two same elliptic curve. Then you have a morphism there. This gives you a nice point. I write x, for example, x here. So this is a point. This point, priorily, it defined x naught of n in a, in, a, in a complex plan. Right? It's just a complex point, nothing surprising. But as I said, these two points are CM elliptic curve uh, by O of k. So the balls defined over H, so this is the Hilbert class field. So this X can be actually much better. X is the define of X naught of N of this big H. Okay, so this is just to give you a point. In Hengen, as a case is much more interesting here because if you think about a class in the moment, this H is just the case itself. Sometimes it's a Q. In the, in the case. And then uh, you apply this guy map to E of H. So you get a point here, a rather phi. So you get a phi of X in this one. So you get a point in the elliptic curve. But not over, um, not over uh, the best field K, over here, but class field K. But it, it doesn't really matter. So I just uh, make a, a P of k to be 5 of x, I take a Galois conjugate, so I get e of k. So this gives you a construction. So. So the Gorin Zagier formula So the Gorin Zagier formula it's is about to understand if these points are trivial or not but somehow he's doing the following way so there the PK, PK, so this narrow tether height is essentially equal to some star that is a positive constant times L derivative E at 1. Okay, so first of all, okay, so let E, E of Q be an elliptic curve over Q, K is an imaginary with hang in the condition. Then Le1 is 0. Then the end, uh, this is true. So this L1 is equal 0 is not a difficult subject. The reason is, uh, remember, when I very beginning, when I define the error function, I say there's a conjecture to be holomorphic. Once you know the modular, you have a function equation. The function equation happened to be odd. So in other words, the elliptic curve, when combined with this thing, will be an odd function equation. So the vanish at one. So the first interesting thing you want to do is a computer derivative. Then you compute derivative, you get this stuff. As usual, you know, you say, well, I'm going to compute derivative. To how to prove this formula? You, you cannot prove. Usually, in, in number theory or in, in geometry, if we prove identity, you always make some continuation to do it. Because you cannot prove one identity is almost impossible. Prove 100 different identity, identity usually is possible. Right? So that's the way. So I'm not going to discuss the proof. K is the one you imagine a quadratic field. When defined the same, you know, that's a K here. 
So, so this closed circuit formula have two input. You input an elliptic curve, and input a you measure quadratic field. Oh, sorry. So this is uh, over k, not over thing. Over k. So this thing depends on k. You best change it to k. The really interesting thing when Gross Aguirre proved this thing, he didn't think it that much. Of course, then it's really surprising that how Kolyvagin would to do that. So the theorem of Kolyvagin. It's very surprising that, so if pk is not zero, then there, then he basically showed the sample group, sample group of E has a rank one. Of course, this is equivalent to, 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 of course, this is equivalent to say the sha, the E of k is a rank is a one, and a sha e over k is a finite. And that's kind of really, uh, really strong statement. Before doing that, so my elliptic curves are originally defined over, over q. I base it to k. So e over k is in fact has a e over q almost like a e d over q. e d over q, you remember, have y square equals x q plus x plus b. That's my e here. e d means I twist by d here. So, 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 so this thing, it gives you two steps. So that's why Kolyvagin's theorem not only they tell you the rank one thing, also take you rank zero thing, because they combine both together. Right? So this is a really, really striking uh, theorem there. And uh, so from the construction of a hangar in 1952 to, uh, nine, to Gorzagia in 1983, Kolivagi maybe 88 to 89, right? So like, these are uh, these 40 some years, suddenly finish the whole story of rank zero, rank one. Okay. So, so in the in the what's left, I will uh, briefly introduce two different uh, generalization. I mean, the Friday what I talk about third generalization, the two two extension. So one is, uh, you see. I mean, the other extent to the gross area formula to, uh, to, to uh, two things, to general uh, total real field. And removing the thing in the condition. As a thing in the condition is not even condition proposed by thing in the. So the reason you remove the condition has some beautiful application. So this, roughly speaking, is doing that, you see, the modular curve is H modular, right? Gamma naught of N. So this is a, is a kind of a curve we're doing. Gamma. So this is a modular curve. The gamma is uh, 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 GR2 of Q plus, plus, I mean, determine plus, is a discrete subgroup, congruent subgroup. Um, well, of course, this is still inside GR2 of a real number plus. Uh, the Shimura curve will be uh, in a different way. So the Shimura curve is 
is, is the generalization, the maximal generalization you can get for this picture. So, so this gamma is still inside 0 to a real number plus, but it's not a, a through 0 to of Q. It's through, um, it's inside a B cross plus here. It's B cross B uh, of F is a quaternion algebra. And F is, uh, has invented the real number, this is total real field. The quaternion algebra by definition means that B tensor F, F bar is a somorphic matrix of F bar. Okay, so the quaternion algebra is the algebra of F. When you best change it to algebra cruise the field, you get a two by two matrices. So when you so this is that you fix, so fix this in, say tau. If you, if you have a V, another embedding to the real number, any embedding, your B tensor F to real number, but the V will be a quaternion over real. Quaternion over real have only two types. Either is a matrix algebra, or it's a, it's a Hamiltonian quaternion. So it's a, you have two types, M2 of R, or the Hamiltonian R plus Ri plus Rj plus Rk. It's the usual thing we know. So in any case, the assumption will be Bv is, is equal to H. If V not equal to BV is equal to M2 of R, if V equals to R. Then you pick out the congruent subgroup inside. Then you form this quotient. Surprisingly, this quotient will define over a number field. Right? Of course, there's many other ways. For example, the triangle group also defined over thing. But this, is kind of a thing there. So this guy uh, does not parameterize any uh, algebraic geometry objects, but almost. What I really mean is that, first of all, he parameterizes the, the hot structures, so not necessarily uh, the abelian variety. Second thing, if you base change slightly, so the, 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 the beautiful part is that, <laughs> Beautiful part is that for gamma be the discrete congruent subgroup. So congruent subgroup is similar. You just pick up a, a lattice there. You take a modular. Then H of gamma is defined over F A B. Some, I mean, some, some, some F of gamma. So this is the uh, abelian extension of F. So, so, so it's, it's really nice. And if we take the limits here, H gamma here, so usually I write X here, so this is a pro curve uh, defined of F. It's not a finite type, anyway, it's a, it's a good stuff. And uh, so if E, if K of F is imaginary quadratic, I have to say totally imaginary. Because uh, you see, because it is totally real, you have many direction can look. And K can invent into B, then you have some CM points, K cross, so this is the K CM points. So in this case, you, you're doing exactly the same game as uh, the gross and Zagier are doing. You will, uh, you will get the, 
So in this case, you get the, you get the, uh, the abelian variety. So the Jacobian of such an X uh, is of GR2 type. So it, when I say abelian variety of GR2 type, like elliptic curve, for example, uh, your, your, your anamorphism is just integer itself. GR2 type is, is so this, this is just the, the result of a, of a gamma here. AI, so the anamorphism, so this is a simple of AI, you write MI here, so this has a dimension a rank, equal the dimension of AI. So this is a something called a GR2 type. Conjecturally, it's not completely proved, every GR2 type abelian variety will be quoted by Shumra varieties. Right, so you get a Vast generalization of the thing, the elliptic curve. Okay, at the end of the day, so you get the Grozagia formula. Yeah, so this is the formula I believe is, a, is the most general formula you can get without assuming anything. So, like a Friday lecture I'm doing, that depends on standard conjectures. So this is probably so one consequence, I mean, many, many consequences. For example, uh, there are many consequences. For one consequence, for example, you can use the converse of gross zagia colli wagen theorem. I mean, this is not proved by me, but they use this formula. You see, the, the, the Kurosaki colleague bargain say, if the order vanishing of error function is finite, then the model value group is rank one. Shavarovich tether group is finite. You can think about the converse. Suppose the model value group is rank one. Shavarovich tether group is finite. Can you show the error function is finite? You can do it by this way. So this is by many people. I mean, the the Yobon Skinner, a uh, Skinner Yobon, Weijian, and uh, this is for non CM case. For CM case, there's Ye Tian, and many other things. The second question is the congruent number problem. So uh, I we're not going to describe. So the, the thing they can, as I say, he's going to just construct some congruent numbers. Say P, I am mean, infinitely many P mod 8 equals 5, for example, but still very little. Conjecturally is that every square free integer, a positive integer, if congruent to 5, 6, 7 mod 8, should be congruent. And if you apply the whole technique, Right now, I think they can prove is about 60% uh, of such numbers are congruent. And also, conjecture that there every square free positive integer mod 8 congruent 1 to 3 are not congruent. Right now, my former undergrad student, Alex Smith, he proved 100% are not congruent. So all this thing is proved through this formula. The third thing is a Sylvester problem. So Sylvester problem, a congruent number problem, probably is two most distinguished problem for elliptic curves. So Sylvester problem is about which integer is a sum of two rational cubes, right? Of course, there's another, even more bigger problem, I mean, some other problem I, I think is really interesting algebra geometry, so which integer the sum of three cubes of integers. This is still unknown. Conjecturally, um, except for finally many exceptions, all of them is the sum of three cubes, but we don't know how to prove it. But uh, this is a the question about two rationals. So are we not going to describe? The, what's left, I want to describe another big um, uh, the extension is in the function field case. In function field case, in the old Grozagia formula, can be proved, 
in, in function field, and I, the most general formula is just appeared very recently by my current PhD student, uh, Chong Lin Chu. He just put an archive in function field. And uh, then I, but what I describe is another surprising extension by my former student, Wei Zhan and Zhu Wei Yun for their, what I call the higher Gorzaga formula. The reason I'm doing that is because this is also very surprising. Over function field. So the setting will be, will be interesting. So k is a finite field. And x of k um, is, a, is a smooth proper curve. And the g, that's for simplicity, pgr2, okay, over, uh, over uh, let's write name f to be k of x over f. So in this, in this case, um, the bottle area is a function, f I mean, in the case we are doing the modular curve, in this case, the, the thing we are doing is I consider this called a dream field, uh, so dream field Stuka, um, of G. So this is a stack, um, the parameterized, okay. So, so this is, uh, is actually is a stack over x to the r, r the even integer. The order also work. Let's consider even integer. So, so this is a, is a stack of, a, of h, x to the r. The, so h, t, g, of S, suppose S is a scheme XR, this is a, is a category of the, the following objects. Of the E1, ER over 2, ER over 2 plus 1, ER, but this is, this is equal to E0 to the sigma. I, I couldn't explain all the notion there. OK, so maybe I'll write to, um, Modular pit. Okay, I'm going to explain that. What? Sigma will for business. I couldn't. I couldn't describe it later. So the E I rank two bundle an X over K of S. Okay, all the rank two bundles, and these arrows means the morphisms. E zero sigma with uh, one plus Frobenius S uh, pullback of x zero. So you have a bundle here. This S over k. This is the absolute Frobenius with respect to this small k. And I need to explain uh, what this thing is. So there's a xi of xi minus one, or xi of xi plus one, right? Because this last part is a, is a different, right? Ah, uh, our line bundles, the gamma xi push forward of line bundles. So what do I really mean? So this s is a, s has a morphism. Right, S has a morphism to 
uh, x to the r, right, has a morphism. But s is a scheme there. So this gives you a here, xi there, right? And uh, the gamma xi are graph. So gamma xi are graph these parts. So, so it means that you have a modification. You have a rank two bundle, they modify at a certain places. Then uh, this last part is a modular Picard variety. For example, uh, if you have a line bundle on this x defined of k, you can tensor every, all of them, but it's a line bundle, it doesn't change anything. So you, what? S is a, is a, is a XR scheme. Now, of course, this Stuka, if we put a level structure, will become a scheme. Uh, but this scheme is not a finite type. The reason is very clear because you involve line vector bundle. When vector bundle, it, no, it never be, you don't have modular vector bundle. But if we put uh, the stability condition on the vector bundle, you will become a moduli. So in other words, you, it's an indoor schemes, right? Because you're using uh, the slope in the slope to to give you a stratification of modular space. Anyway, it's, it is it is pretty. It's not that terrible. I mean, example is interesting. If, if r equals zero, r equals zero. What does that mean? Does it mean that e zero is isomorphic to the Frobenius? Right. This means nothing. It just means your your vector bundle. Is it defined over k, right? So, so this is Stuka. Uh, it's nothing. It's just, uh, just the, the the set of vector bundles of, of x. So isomorphic to so gr two p gr two of a modular the same modular p gr two of c. So that's the usual. Uh, the uh, automorphic set we know. What? It doesn't depend on S. Because your, uh, your, your for, this guy equals for this, this guy will give you a descent. Your easier must define over, over, over small stuff. What? Yeah, R equals zero is uh, actually the, the dimension of, of G is a two times R. Right? R equals zero is zero dimensional thing. Another interesting thing, which is, a, I think, is really nice to see when uh, the GR2, I wrote GR2. If you think about GR1, it's even more interesting. So if we go GR1, if we go Stuka of one of R, this is a very interesting, but this becomes the, the, the line bundles, right? R0, R1, RR over 2, R over 2 plus 1. If this end, that's a to L0 sigma, right? So if you think about this guy, what this picture say? This is sig because this, the difference this guy is, is, is something the points I get, right? So this means that the Li, equals Li minus 1 over the Xi, or uh, equal to Li plus, uh, plus or minus i, depends if i is this side or other side. So, so this is giving you really amazing thing. So this is equal to L0 inside pick of x, and uh, such as that, L0 tends to L0 sigma for the inverse, right? It's, uh, let me, maybe the other way, it doesn't really matter. L0 sigma, L0 inverse is isomorphic to OX of the summation XI I less than R over 2 minus sigma XI I bigger than R over 2. So, so if you think about this, what they're saying is, this is a, uh, 
this Shiduka is basically constructed by by the two things. You have a pick x, map of pick x. So this is a line bundle goes to L sigma L universe, right? Actually, pick zero here. Other guys, xr is xi map to sigma xi i less than r over 2, xi i bigger than r over 2. Oh, right? Okay, so this is a, uh, this is a Cartesian product. So this basically is a, yeah, right? So it's a really, very interesting uh, phenomenon. Well, of course, this thing, so this gives you some idea about how the, uh, the class field theory was involved here. It's a, it's a nature extension covering, this defined nature covering of this space over here. But the kernel of this space is nothing. The kernel of space is a pick, a, this is a pick a x of f cube. It has a finite group, right? Okay? Because this is just these two isomorphic of each other, right? It's just just a final group. So this is uh, the thing there. So then, the interesting part will be the following. The interesting part we have. Uh, I just introduced the. You have rank n. You can have rank n Stuka. But uh, what I'm going to interest in is x prime. Suppose x prime to x is a new is at all double cover. So then I have a Stuka one of the x prime to. I mean, uh, uh, still let me r here. R means r less. Are uh, modifications to Stuka 2x of R by, um, if I have a line bundle in the top, I just push my line bundle to x, get around two bundles. Right? So I, if I have this guy, I get the new star of this guy. Right? I get around two bundles. So this is give you. So the image of this thing is called, uh, so you get the image. So new, new star H1 T R X prime is called a thing in the cycles. That's the thing in the cycles are doing. But you think about it, when you do elliptic curve, you have CM elliptic curve, which is the GR1 over the real quadratic extensions. So now you have natural thing there. Okay, I'm not going to uh, write a lot of the details. Okay, my time is it's it's almost there. So I write down the write down the second thing. So you have H T G of R of X. So you inside this thing you can uh, study the the Chow cycles or whatever. Uh, well, let me see how can I do. You can, so if you have a, a, a pi representation, unramified representation of PGR2 uh, of F, automorphic representation, so this will give you a piece of cycles, CHR of H T G R. But a C, C means the compact supported, because my variety is not compact supported, right? It's very big. But this is a compact supported, I just described, because uh, it's just a pick up group. So, so you can define this piece, pi there. And uh, so this thing in the cycle will define, the, 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 this, this thing, you have this thing in the cycle, Z of pi. 
inside. Uh, the theorem of Yin and, and, and John is that the seventh section is equal to the R derivative of uh, this pi best change it to, to this x prime, f prime, at one, plus some constant there. And this formula is really striking because it does not require that the first r minus one derivative vanish. It's, it's really about a tail expansion. It's not about the leading coefficient. So it's, it's, in some sense, it's pretty much different than the the BSC conjecture predicted, right? And uh, so, I mean, there are many questions remaining. So how this theorem relates to the BSC conjecture? The common sense is that, you know, this R derivative taken up certain uh, alternative sums there. Another, que another thing is interesting to relate it to the Parsons philosophy that <laughs> of such a variety in the high dimension base, uh, you should also have uh, the height, Fulton's type height. But the Fulton type height in this case uh, is slightly different. So, so what happened is the Shaduka of G R of X R. So this relative dimension is R. So the the tangent bundle. of XR relative thin, um, this is a rank, rank R bundle. So there, so if you have a, a, a variety, if you have a section here, upon a P here, you suppose you can define the kind of fault is the height by taking the CR of this bundle. Right, so it's, a, it's a, the base is high dimensional, and there should be kind of a thing like uh, our kind of partial inequality, or model type conjecture, or Shavaruch type conjecture. We have no idea about that. But this is because this theorem is really the first time we're doing arithmetic, not of a curve, of the product of curves, and uh, how to analyze the, the geometry of this variety is a completely open question. So. Okay, maybe I should stop here. Yes. So even in that case, the the theorem is non-trivial. It's a theorem of Vasu J in the using. Theta lifting method, yeah. And then you uh, uh, were speaking about the Caesar integer. Yes. Yes, yeah, so they have two papers, recent paper of Yuan Zhang, what kind of order case? Is another paper, I don't know if they're, I mean, the first paper already published in annals. Second paper, I submit the annals, I probably should be up here uh, soon, yeah. That about other case. Yes, but uh, but still, like a hanging condition, the the, the restriction is uh, is humongous, because uh, the the proof here is not like uh, use our kind of theory is local heights. Here, all the methods are global, so they want a Stuka will be has a um, has a smooth model all the time. This is really really hard. So that's uh, so so other case they have some theorem too. Yeah, so, but as a um, yeah. I call one of my current students uh, work. It's just uh, then it's a maximum generality. Yeah. Then you you use without Stuka, but it's called uh, Trimford elliptic modules. It's, a, it's very similar. So you, you fix one point. Yeah. Oh, 
Or what you can drop the single condition? Okay, yes. Okay, so they, you, you asked a good question. So these are... Um, so more precise, it can be that the rank is one, but Hegner point is a torsion. Well, they do not satisfy Hegner condition. Okay, okay. Is it known an example like this? So the, you asked two separate questions. So if you only care about arithmetic of your abelian variety of a total real field, the no, thing no, no, the condition. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, if you do the imagined quadratic field, then uh, when you write an error function by hand, yes. this error function has a, a function equation. Uh, in the blackboard, I write a global function equation, plus or minus one, right? So, but but uh, this uh, this global rule number come from a local rule number. The local rule number can tell you which Shimura variety you're going to pick up. So Hingen condition is just a very special case that there is the one. So, so everything is, is unique determinants. Give you K, give you A, you know which Shimura variety. There's only one Shimura variety that makes this work. To pick up, yeah, Shumra curve. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Coming from some, some. special point on some Shumra curve. Right. But not, not X on top N. Yeah, so you were not going to get a two. So at the beginning, people confused. So maybe I use this curve to construct one point. Other curve, another point, and maybe there's two points that get wrong too. That's no, never happened. Only one curve works. And in high rank cases, it's expected that somehow your interest will come from, from some Shumra. High, high rank have no idea. Nobody has any idea how to do the right, uh, high rank case. Yes. Uh, I, I want to ask you about the rank of a elliptic curve. So, is it true that it's uh, there is a conjecture that it's unbounded? Okay, there's a two different theory. Yeah. Two different beliefs, completely opposite to each other. Uh -huh. So the Douglas Olomo, he's doing the function field case. He believes rank will go to infinity. Uh -huh. But other hand, beyond Poon and on the hand, maybe Melina Woods, they make a statistical model. They think for any number field, all elliptic curve by finally many have a rank bounded by 26. So they, 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 they just get a stati statistical model, uh -huh. then give it 26 right away. So I have no idea. Okay. So in either case. But, uh, but this question is very important. The reason is, recently, that the three guys, um, uh, Zi Yang Gao and uh, Philip Habeck and uh, Dimitar, I forget this Hungarian guy, uh, no, Bulgarian guy, he, the three combined together show the following striking theorem. For any curve of a number field, uh, the number of rational points is a linear band, bond. Uh, I mean, there are some fixed numbers of power uh, depends on rank. He got a uniform bond. So if you think about if a Jacobian, if the model very rank band is uniform bond, the theorem will give a uniform bound on uh, and a number of rational points. So now, for Modea conjecture, we have a uniform bound of uh, rational points. Depends only on the rank in an ex ex explicit uh, way. I think, I forget it, probably seven to the rank I of, of Jacobian of C, of something like that. I, I'm probably not seven, but some other number. But the number is very explicit. Some, some bigger, 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 bigger A, you know. I mean, whatever, some number there. So number of C of K, let's see for this thing. Yeah, so if this guy is a bounded, then means that we still have no idea about the effective model conjecture, but we have uniform bond of number of rational points. This is also, you know, and many years ago, people don't believe it. Now people start to believe if you have this end, then you have this end. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you.
for for any for for n num any number field k. Um, See the curve. For any curve defined a number field uh, of genius greater equal than two. Right, right, right. Yeah, the number of rational points are uniformly bounded in terms of uh, uh, model A rank. 